Welcome to the Empower Her Wellness Podcast. I'm Morgan and I'm thrilled to be your host and wellness coach as we navigate the path to a healthier, more confident you. As the owner of Get Fit With Me, I bring years of experience in personal training, nutrition, and coaching to each episode. Join me as we explore practical tips and strategies for fitness, nutrition, mindset, and more, all tailored for busy women just like you. Let's empower your wellness journey and achieve lasting transformation together. Welcome back to the Empower Her Wellness Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Morgan Ekovich, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, morning routines. You may have a morning routine and you may not. We all have a routine, whether we like to think we do or not. Your routine may be very structured and it may be very calming and very grounding. Or you may have the routine of frantically getting out of bed, rushing around, brushing your teeth, getting out the door, hopefully not forgetting anything you need on your way out. Whether you are routine number one or routine number two, it's a routine. But the type of routine you have matters and how your morning routine looks matters and will determine and can determine how the rest of your day will go. If your morning routine was the wake up late, rushed, feeling frantic, all of that, the rest of your day is going to go that way. And also that energy that you have is going to project into those around you. Whereas if you were routine number one, you woke up and you had a calm, you had some calm time to yourself, you weren't rushed, you felt in control, the rest of your day is going to go that way. You're going to feel more productive. So today we're going to talk about a few tips, tricks, and ways to actually create a simple morning routine that's going to make you feel more calm, more grounded, more productive later on. And I am going to kind of do a few different steps. So as always, if taking on it all seems like too much, pick one thing to take on. We will build on it. Micro habits, small steps, it will build on each other. So as we are talking about our morning routine, I want you to think back to a few episodes ago where we talked about that all or nothing mentality. Your morning routine does not have to be perfect or rigid. For instance, on the weekends, I tend to have my perfect morning routine. I have more time. We have less things to get to. I am less rushed. There's just less stress on the weekends. So I have like a seven-step morning routine. During the week, I have three simple steps, this, this, and this. And if I can do those three things, I will still feel my absolute best. But I know that depending on the day, my morning routine is going to look different but the key steps are always gonna be in there. So I'm flexible with myself. If I have more time, I do more things. If I don't, I do my bare minimum. I do the things that are gonna make me feel my best, those bare minimum items. So when we think about creating that morning routine, one of the biggest things is we just think about the morning when really we should be thinking about the night before. How we end our previous day and what we do the night before is what affects that morning. So number one, I need you to start noticing when do you go to bed? When are you going to bed? And are you going to bed at a reasonable hour so that you can get up in the morning and have energy? Because a lot of us are not getting enough sleep, whether it's quality or quantity or both. We're not getting enough of it. And we'll dive deeper into sleep in a different episode. But that's one of the biggest things is we have to look at the night before. Are we going to bed at a reasonable time? And are we calming ourselves down in a way before bed so that we get a good night's sleep? Or are we just frantic all of the time? If we're frantic all the time, we need to have a different conversation, which we'll talk about in sleep. But we need to have a good nighttime routine. The other thing that we need to do the night before is we need to plan tomorrow today. So we talked about this in a few episodes back where I talked about our free 21 day control your day challenge. And in that challenge, you have two actions. You actually have more than two actions, but I'm going to refer back to two of those actions. One is keep a calendar or planner. The other one is plan tomorrow today. So at the end of your day today, before you get into your nighttime routine, I want you to sit down with your calendar or planner and I want you to look and plan tomorrow. What do you have time for? What do you need to do tonight to make tomorrow morning successful? What do you need to find tonight to make tomorrow morning run smoother? 
Is it that permission slip? Is it making sure the printer works? Is it making sure you've got clean workout clothes? Like, what is it? Decide, figure out what tomorrow looks like and what can you do tonight to make tomorrow morning less stressful? So we got to think about starting the night before. Those are the first two things you need to do. Once you have mastered those, then we're going to jump into the morning. We're waking up. And what tends to happen is we wake up and we just get going with the day, which don't get me wrong. I am somebody who is like, let's move, let's do it all. But one thing that has absolutely changed the way in which my day goes is not jumping into work as soon as I wake up in the morning. It has changed the way my day goes. It's changed my mindset. It has changed my view on a lot of things. So what I do is when I wake up, I do my same normal. I get up, I turn off the alarm, I go to the bathroom, I brew a pot of coffee, and then I sit. I sit without opening my laptop and doing emails. I don't get into work, even if it's just for five minutes, because maybe I wake up a little late. I give myself at least five minutes, my goal is 15, to sit with my coffee, to sit with myself, whether I'm reading a book, maybe I'm watching a show that I wanted to watch, but I am giving myself five to 15 minutes every morning of me time before I get in the shower, before I start making breakfast, before I go find all the things, before I open the email, before I go wake up when I'm nannying my nanny kids in the morning, before I even get them up, things like that. I need those five to 15 minutes for myself. What that does is that brings me back to me. It allows me to take a deep breath. It allows me to start the day with feeling calm and collected. So if you are somebody who wakes up frantic, rushed, stressed, anxious, any of those feelings, and you are not taking five to 15 minutes every morning, as soon as you get out of bed for you, that is your next step. Take a deep breath. Nothing is that urgent. It is okay. Five minutes of you time will go a really long way because let's be honest, as soon as that day gets started, you get pushed to the wayside. You get pushed further down on that list. And you just keep getting pushed down and down and you get to the end of the night and you think of, oh, I want to do all these things for me. And you're so exhausted that you don't even do them and you think, oh, I'll do them tomorrow. And we repeat the same cycle. So making sure you've got a good nighttime routine, you've planned tomorrow today, that allows you to get up and have five to 15 minutes to yourself in the morning of you time. Once you've mastered those, the next thing that your body is going to love and appreciate you for is moving it. So you can combine your movement with your five to 15 minutes of you time. They don't have to be two separate things. You can combine them. So sometimes for me, it's drinking my coffee while on my walking pad or drinking my coffee while I go out in the neighborhood for a little walk. I can combine those. But that third thing is if you've mastered the you time and you've mastered the nighttime routine and you've mastered the plan tomorrow today, or you've at least been 80% consistent with these. Let's take it back to that 80-20 rule we talked about in episode seven. Like if you are doing it at least 80%, then I want you to think about how can you move your body in the morning? By moving your body, you are stretching your muscles. You are opening up your muscles and you're stretching and you're just, oh, it just feels so good because we wake up stiff and oh, I'm, oh, I'm so achy. Move your body. You will feel better. So when you are doing this, moving your body doesn't have to look like an hour long workout. Absolutely not. Because like I said, you may only have time for that five minutes of you time. That may mean drinking your coffee and stretching for five minutes. That may mean reading a book and, or listening to a book and going for a walk, five to 15 minutes. You can combine those together, but moving your body is going to make you feel better. It's going to wake up, not just your body, but also your mind. It's gonna start getting those creative juices flowing, the energy moving, all of that. So we want to make sure we are doing that as well after we've mastered or we're at least 80% consistent with the other things. So ways that some of these are going to sound very, very simple, but here are some practical ways that you can start implementing these things in today. 
is for waking up, set an alarm for 15 minutes earlier than your normal wake up time. When that alarm goes off, don't snooze it. Get up and give yourself that 15 minutes of you time. It's a treat. It's something that you need and it's something that you want and you can do it. The next thing is when you plan tomorrow today, if you know your mornings are stressful and breakfast is a really hard meal for yourself and your family to get because of all the things happening, plan your breakfast. Plan your snacks the night before, whether that's actually preparing them so you just have to rewarm them in the morning or that's just having the idea of what are we eating? Okay, we're having oatmeal with eggs. Great, you've made the decision the night before. So in the morning, it's not a decision. It's just autopilot. It will make your morning go smoother. Same thing goes if you're packing lunches for other people or you're packing lunches for yourself. If you can do that the night before, the less things you have to do in the morning when you get out the door, the calmer and the better your morning is going to go. And finally, that tip number three is pair that movement with your you time. I find that that's the easiest way to go about making both of those happen and honoring yourself and your body and what it needs. So I've given you some tangible, actionable items that you can do. I recommend you always, like I said, this podcast isn't just for you to learn and listen. It's for you to take action, for you to get support, for you to get accountability from me. So go to the show notes, jump into our Facebook community. It says for busy moms, it's for busy women and jump in there and call your shot. How are you taking control of your mornings? What one of these steps are you gonna implement into your morning routine so that you can have a calm, collected, smooth morning every single day. And like I said, on weekends, I have like seven things that I do. But on the day-to-day when life is busy, I've got those four things. I've got making sure I go to bed at a reasonable time and having my good nighttime routine, which we'll talk about deeper in another episode. I plan tomorrow today. I give myself five to 15 minutes every morning to myself. And I make sure I move my body because all of those things together make for the best day ever. So the other thing I want you to remember is when you make any change, no matter where it is, I want you to remember to track your progress. Make note of how you feel physically, mentally, emotionally right now before changing in that morning routine. Write down what that morning routine currently looks like, what emotions are behind it. And then every day, Track your progress. How did you feel? Did you feel increased energy? Was your mood better? Were you still stressed out? Was your overproductivity better? Was it not? Like make note of that. Because remember, progress takes time. And it's so small that sometimes we don't even realize it's happening. So it's really important that we focus on those little small wins, those small steps that we do every single day. So that when I check in and I say, hey, how's it going? and I ask you how things started and how things are now, you can actually see the small progression every single day. So remember, mornings do not have to be stressful. You are in control of them. You are in control of your life. A simple routine can help set you up for success, and by starting small and waking up just 15 minutes earlier in the morning, you can create lasting habits that improve your overall health and wellness. Until next time. Thank you for listening to the Empower Her Wellness Podcast. I hope you feel more empowered and ready to tackle your wellness goals. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to send me a message. Make sure to subscribe and leave a review to help us reach more women just like you. Until next time, take control of your wellness and keep empowering yourself every day.